Thank you all very much. Welcome back, everyone. Our first order of business is to move the resolution to elect the 2021-2022 NGA officers and the executive committee members. Our immediate past chair and nominating committee chair, Governor Larry Hogan, was unfortunately not able to be with us today. So offering the resolution on Governor Hogan's behalf is Governor Ducey of Arizona. Governor Ducey. Thank you, Governor Cuomo, and hello, everyone. It's great to see everyone, even if it is virtually. On behalf of Governor Hogan and the nominating committee, which includes Governors McKee, Kearney, Cox, and Scott, I'm pleased to present the slate of the NGA Executive Committee members and officers. For members of the Executive Committee, the committee nominates Governor Charlie Baker of Massachusetts, Governor Kay Ivey of Alabama, Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham of New Mexico, Governor Jared Polis of Colorado, Governor Gretchen Whitmer of Michigan, Governor Andrew Cuomo of New York, myself, Governor Doug Ducey of Arizona, and for NGA Vice Chairman, Governor Phil Murphy of New Jersey, and for NGA Chairman, Governor Asa Hutchinson of Arkansas. Chairman Cuomo, on behalf of Governor Hogan and the nominating committee, I move to have this resolution adopted. Governor Ducey, uh, thank you very much. Thank you for your good work. That sounds like a winning slate to me. Is there a second in favor of the motion? So moved. Those in favor of the proposed new officers and executive committee members, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the new officers in the executive committee members are agreed to. Congratulations to all. Governor Hutchinson, congratulations uh, to my neighbor, Governor Phil Murphy, congratulations, and to the entire executive committee. Uh, before I hand the gavel over to our new chair, uh, let me just say a few final words, if I might. I've had the pleasure of serving with Governor Asa Hutchinson this past year, uh, and I think it's been an outstanding partnership. As you know, we've had weekly uh, meetings with the White House going through substantive issues that have been very difficult. Asa jumped in as vice chair in the middle of the pandemic uh, and helped me as my partner lead this organization. And that's what's truly great about the NGA. Over the last 18 months, first we had Governor Larry Hogan and myself, uh, and then Ace Governor Asa Hutchinson and myself, two Republican governors from totally different states and regions, partnering together with a New York governor, the first uh, chairman from the state of New York, and doing it in a bipartisan way. And we never lost a beat and we delivered for the NGA, and we never let politics get in the way. Uh, and we helped this nation uh, through this pandemic, uh, and we did the best we could for our states. Governor Hutchinson has been a huge part of our success in securing historic financial assistance for each of you and for holding each administration's feet to the fire respectfully and responsibly but we've made sure that states and territories got what they needed. On a personal note, Asa has been a great colleague on our one-on-one -on -one calls, on our conversations with the White House, on our group calls and more. Uh, we've worked together as a team. I have no doubt that Asa will continue to build on the work we've done together and will lead the NGA to brighter days. And I have no doubt that Governor Phil Murphy will be extraordinary as a vice chairman. And with that, I now pass the NGA gavel over to Arkansas governor and the new chair of the National Governors Association, Governor Asa Hutchinson. This gavel is for you, Asa. Well, uh, thank you, Governor Cuomo. And uh, I am delighted and honored to accept uh, this gavel. And I wanna thank all of you for placing your trust and confidence in me to take leadership of the NGA. And uh, Governor Ducey, thank you for uh, your support through the uh, nominating committee as well. Uh, this will be a critical year for our states and territories 
individually and for the nation as we navigate through recovery and return to normalcy after the pandemic, which we are still in. Governor Cuomo, your tenure as NGA chairman through this pandemic has certainly not been easy, but I have appreciated the way you have handled the job and helped our nation's governors score crucial victories that have provided real results. You have rightly focused on COVID during your tender, tenure. And everyone here listening should know that Andrew has led with a steady hand. Calmness in the face of adversity is the foundation of leadership. And we all appreciate your steadfastness and your work during this time. From a personal standpoint, uh, Andrew, I want you to know that my uh, granddaughter, uh, Jayella, will be attending college in New York, so she will be a semi-constituent of yours, and uh, uh, we always appreciate that relationship that we can have with New York. As I take the uh, gavel today, one of my most important missions will be to help facilitate the state's partnership with the White House to guide the nation out of the pandemic. We have much work to do to overcome vaccine hesitancy, but we can do it together. Just from a personal standpoint, I wanna add that uh, I grew up on a farm. My dad was a farmer. My mom and dad had high school educations, but they believed uh, in giving the next generation, their children, greater opportunities. Because of their sacrifice, I've had opportunities they've never dreamed of. Uh, I have had the privilege of serving as United States Attorney under the Ronald Reagan administration, to serve in the United States Congress, to serve in the Bush administration at DEA and Homeland Security. And then I came back and I ran for governor of Arkansas and I lost uh, the first time. And many of you have had similar experiences, but Eight years later, I had another opportunity and it's been a great privilege for me to be governor uh, into my second term as governor of Arkansas. And if I look at my life, I've helped guide the security of our nation after 9-11. I've prosecuted neo-Nazi thugs and criminal organizations. And now to work with my colleagues across the nation on the critical issues facing our nation is indeed a high privilege. Now let's talk for a moment about the upcoming year. First of all, uh, we plan to meet in person. Uh, I know the necessity of our virtual meetings, but it is important that we meet together. And we have to be together to share experiences, ideas, and to encourage one another. Substantively, we will focus on information sharing with the administration from pandemic planning and recovery to American Rescue Plan funding and best practices related to that. We'll work on keeping an eye on legislative efforts in Washington that impact our respective states. The work of the NGA is more important than ever. At a time when our nation seems so divided, it is very important that our states work as laboratories of democracy, where we innovate, determine what works best, and share our ideas. It's important that we continue our bipartisan work together. No doubt we will disagree on many issues, but it is important for our states to set the example of civil discourse, debate on ideas, respect and efforts to find ways to work together. That is the history and legacy of the NGA if we want to continue it. Our advocacy has never been more important. Infrastructure, education recovery and advancement healthcare and public safety. These are all issues we face and work on together every day. And Washington needs to hear from us. The states need flexibility and we'll be good partners to work together to accomplish our mutual goals. My chair's initiative, I'm happy to say, will be computer science education. This is something that we've worked on in Arkansas. Uh, we've set a a good leadership role in that effort. But we want to share our experience during this next year, but more importantly, to showcase what the different governors are doing in their states and territories. The specifics of this initiative will be set out in an upcoming NGA meetings, so stay tuned. 
but I'm excited about it. I'm excited about working with you on that initiative, and it certainly relates to our cybersecurity challenges as well as our technology future. And now let me shift uh, to talk about an important announcement, and that is we are announcing today that our 2022 annual summer meeting will be in Portland, Maine, the Pine Tree State, where Governor Mills will host our gathering. Many of you, I know that's, many of you will recall, what was it, a year ago or more that she got us all excited about going to Maine and then COVID hit. And so we're to return to the opportunity that we heard about before. So Governor Mills, thank you. The floor is yours. Oh, wow. Thank you, Governor Hutchison. Congratulations. <clears throat> this is a poster of Maine. This is the last time the NGA, uh, the Portland, Maine hosted the NGA summer conference. That was in 1983. I was a young district attorney. I was on the host committee. I think I'm gonna use the same poster because nothing about this landscape has truly changed. I wanna welcome you to Maine next July at this time. Many of you are very familiar with my state. I know uh, Governor Wolf, you have close relations here. Governor Lamont, certainly. Governor Bell, John Bell Edwards, <clears throat> Governor Baker and Sununu and Scott, I know you visit here too. About a year ago at this time, we were all debating when to open our racetracks, you know, and whether to have full audience participation or not. And uh, Governor Scott and Governor Sununu and I were debating. And I said, well, I don't have many racetracks. I think I only have two big ones. And Governor Scott corrected me forcefully saying he we had about 12 racetracks in Maine. He'd been to every one of them and he'd won races there, pretty much every one of them. So he knows some parts of my state better than I do, but I'm eager to welcome you back next year at this time. The weather in Maine in July is just perfect. It's about 75 to 80, rarely any warmer, it's pretty sunny. And uh, we have a minor league baseball team, the Sea Dogs. We have some of the best restaurants before the coat, before the pandemic hit, Portland, Maine was rated one of the best restaurant cities, foodie cities in the country, and is making a comeback now with all the COVID precautions that they've been careful to, uh, to, to adhere to. And um, we have L.L. Bean just up the road from Portland, if you feel like shopping on a rainy day in Freeport, Maine, and pretty good internet. We have a rocky coastline and sandy beaches and some of the oldest lighthouses in the country that are very, very picturesque and lovely to visit. Craft beers, we've got about 150 craft breweries in Maine. I don't know why. I think they exploded over during the pan pandemic too. They just, you know, expanded. Don't know why. But we're also, uh, we boast oysters and scallops and lobsters and clams and whatnot. Um, but we also know that because we started planning this a year and a half ago, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. We're ready for you. The hotels are ready for you. The beaches are ready for you. The, shopping malls and the baseball um, uh, parks are all ready for you. And a new children's museum just opened two weeks ago. My granddaughters and I cut the ribbon and my granddaughter was first in the door and it's right, all, everything is right in town. Portland is a very condensed city and lovely to visit and lovely to live there. So it is, we like to say, one of the safest as, one of, as well as one of the most beautiful states in the country. We have the lowest crime rate, lowest violent crime rate. We vie with Vermont for lowest crime rate and uh, highest vaccination rates, again, vying with Vermont and Connecticut, sometimes Massachusetts, and lowest case rates right now uh, of COVID-19, lowest hospitalization rates and some of the lowest death rates. So we've been maintaining our stamina here during the pandemic. Uh, and hopefully the Canadian border will open before next year too, and we'll be able to visit a little bit of Canada on your trip to Maine. So um, I'm eager to welcome you all back to Maine. I know none of you were here in 1983. I was, and I'm gonna use the same poster. Everything is still as beautiful as it was then. It is as beautiful now. Thank you very much, Governor Hutchinson. And again, congratulations. Thank you, Governor Mills, and I think your announcement has already made my tenure as NG chairman a success. So uh, we're all excited about uh, being there with you uh, next summer, but a lot of work to do uh, between now and then, including our, our uh, February, uh, our, our winter meeting that will be uh, in Washington. I also wanted to uh, welcome uh, Governor Phil Murphy. He and I talked over the phone. He'll be vice chair, and Phil, I'm excited about working with you and uh, 
I look forward to our working relationship along with the others on the executive committee. Uh, thank you for your uh, continued commitment to, uh, to the uh, NGA. And so thank, thank you, you Asa, for same right back. Congratulations. And I also want to salute my neighbor, Governor Cuomo, for a great term as chair. Looking forward to working with you. Uh, thank you, Phil. And, and here, here to uh, your comment on Governor Cuomo. And I'm going to, again, one, thank uh, everyone for giving me this privilege. Looking forward to this next year. And then I'm going to turn it back to uh, Governor Cuomo for his uh, final words. And again, Andrew, it's been a it's been a pleasure. I look forward to seeing you and continue to work with you. Andrew, well, thank you turn. very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Asa. Congratulations to you. I'm excited uh, about what you're going to do with the NGA. Um, and Governor Phil Murphy, uh, we are neighbors. We've we've done a lot of great work together. You're going to be a great team. Uh, and any way I can help, any way uh, any of our colleagues can help, I'm sure, as you know, we'll all be there. Governor Mills, you, you, we're all excited about going to Maine. I've been there many times. Uh, but I'll tell you, I heard something. I made a note. If Governor Scott has been to all 12 racetracks, I think I'm going to get some tips from Governor Scott uh, while I'm up there. Uh, but, Governors, uh, it's been a heck of a year. We did it. We did it together. We're going to move this country forward. We're going to do even better going forward. Asa, congratulations. Phil, congratulations. I ask for a motion to adjourn the summer meeting of 2021 of the National Governors Association. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Aye. Thank you. God bless. Thank you.